Hello and welcome everyone. Bonjour tout le monde, bienvenue. I'm Sean Fraser, Canada's Minister of Immigration, Refugees and Citizenship and the Member of Parliament for Central Nova. I'm so pleased to be able to join you today for this important conversation. Before I begin, let me first acknowledge that I'm joining you virtually from Nova Scotia, which is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. I want to thank the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario and St. Paul's University in particular for supporting this important conference on the National Newcomer Navigation Network, or as we all know it, N4. I also want to commend all of you who joined N4 because of the work that it enables us to do together to support newcomers who arrive in Canada. Votre travail permet d'aider les nouveaux arrivants à obtenir les soins de santé physique et mentale dont ils ont besoin afin de pouvoir s'établir dans des collectivités à l'échelle du pays et de s'y bâtir une nouvelle vie. Canada, in my mind, is the international leader when it comes to settlement and integration. It's because we know that it's not enough just to get people here, but that we also have to make sure that they're set up for success once they arrive. As you know all too well, uh, we're working to accomplish this through an incredible network of over 500 settlement organizations across the country that work to help newcomers feel at home within their new communities. Nous avons donc besoin de projets novateurs comme le N4, uh, des initiatives qui permettent de mettre en relation et de soutenir ceux d'entre vous qui aident ces nouveaux arrivants à s'établir. Uh, when newcomers succeed, our communities succeed. Some of the newcomers that you're assisting already have jobs that directly contribute to our recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. They're working in our hospitals and long-term care homes, our manufacturing and agricultural sectors, and right across the supply chains that have helped deliver essential goods in our time of need over what's been an incredibly difficult few years. But we can't forget that the decision newcomers make to choose Canada as their new home can bring with it the biggest changes and challenges of their entire lives. Beaucoup d'entre eux ont besoin de l'aide de fournisseurs de services en établissement. Et pendant la pandémie, les difficultés d'accès à ces services ont rendu l'effet de bâtir une nouvelle vie dans un nouveau pays encore plus complexe. Initiatives like N4 are designed to help address this. As many of you know, N4 provides members with access to several online tools, including things like an online educational program, links to events, curated resources, and online training. A community of practice where solutions to existing problems can be discussed, identified, and then the solutions can be shared with others, with colleagues right across Canada. And they host twice monthly webinars by professionals from various sectors. Those using N4 have relied on it to provide them with data that they need to advocate for their clients and have used it to connect them with other service providers all across the country. And healthcare practitioners in particular with access to N4 have said that it has increased their awareness of the healthcare challenges faced by newcomers and refugees and allowed them to advance potential solutions. Et il y a certainement beaucoup de défis à cet égard. Imaginez-vous quitter votre pays d'origine, venir au Canada et devoir vous adapter à toutes ces nouveautés, notamment au nouveau système de santé. Just take a moment to imagine what it's like to land in Canada and your first language is not French or English and your children end up serving as interpreters between you and the healthcare professionals you're trusting to take care of you. Imagine being unsure if all of your health services are paid for, wondering if you might have to pay for dental work, hearing aids, or prescription drugs out of pocket. All of you working in our settlement, resettlement, and healthcare sectors have likely witnessed newcomers with these kinds of concerns. So you probably see the value in sharing these situations with your professional colleagues and discussing ways to overcome them. C'est pourquoi j'ai été ravi de prendre l'existence de N4 et de la collaboration qu'il favorisait pour aider les nouveaux arrivants et naviguer les, dans le système de soins de santé. I encourage N4 to continue to work closely with Health Canada and provincial and territorial health authorities as well. I also understand that CHIO is interested in leveraging and adapting their N4 platform for other priorities, like tackling the issue of foreign credential recognition for health professionals, which I deal with almost every day. Now we'd be pleased to explore this further with CHIO and continue that conversation and help bring other federal partners to the table as well. That's how our collective settlement and integration efforts can be, not only efficient and effective, but, but also inclusive. As many of you probably know, N4 is already producing results that benefit our settlement efforts right across Canada. Let's take a look at just a few examples that we can draw on. Through uh, N4, settlement professionals in related fields now have the ability to access a national, cross-sectoral network. As a result, if a newcomer family relocates from one community to another, this network can help the family find information and connect with settlement services in their new home. To assist those who are working with Afghan refugees, 
An N4 working group is collecting and curating resources for a one-stop toolkit. This kit provides them with information on cultural awareness, language and LGBTQ2 plus issues, and physical or mental health problems specific to Afghan newcomers. Afin d'aider les personnes qui travaillent en première ligne avec des patients nouveaux arrivants, the info procès de la sensibilisation uh, liée à des facteurs comme les traumatismes, uh, les difficultés financières, des préoccupations qui pourraient empêcher les nouveaux arrivants de demander de l'aide médicale ou leur faire manquer des rendez-vous médicaux. And finally, to reduce the need for children of newcomer parents to act as interpreters for adults at medical appointments, N4 is being used to develop recommendations about making professional interpretation available for newcomers using health and social services. Now, just to conclude, I know that there are other examples I could mention, but let me close on this thought. Our country, Canada, has a proud history of opening its doors to newcomers and refugees from every corner of the world. Not only are these individuals driving our economic success and strengthening our diversity, but they've been working on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. Dans cet esprit, le Canada a accueilli des nouveaux arrivants, les a aidés à s'établir et finance des projets comme le N4 pour mettre à l'essai, moderniser et renforcer son système d'établissement. I want to say thank you for inviting me to join you in highlighting the impacts of this important network, and I want to take this opportunity to commend all of you for the progress that you're bringing to the settlement sector and the contributions that you're making to help newcomers build a stronger and more dynamic Canada. Thank you once again for having me today. Merci beaucoup.